and four. The battle is on. It's going to be too close to go side by side. Wong Do gets it. We oh, we got contact. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We got flips. We got big wrecks here. Going back to the front because we're racing back to the line. William Page with the victory. Looking for second here. Oh, he's going to use that apron. He's going to use the apron. They're going to be side by side. Coming off the corner. Boy, back to the inside. It's going to be a drag race to the line. Top Musa gets it. Top Musa, where did he come from? Boyer trying to close the gap. He's going to get to the bumper. Oh, just barely did not make it. Coming off a turn four, Jeff Sikennis is going to win it at Dover. Before I wrap things up here in this segment, your thoughts on the type of race we're going to see tonight. And I would have to agree. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to tonight's feature presentation of the All-Star Racing Cup Series here from the Atlanta Motor Speedway. As always, I'm your host, Joe Twansky. Alongside me tonight, you love them. You know him, but most importantly, he's a fantastic fella to have up here in the booth. It's Mr. Tommy Bordeaux. Tommy, welcome back, I think, to Atlanta. Indeed, yeah. I think this is uh, broadcast number three for me in Atlanta in the past week. It's good to be back here once again. I was a little bit worried there at the start where you said you either love him or I thought you were going to say or you hate him, but uh, that might be true. But hey, it uh, should be a fun race tonight. 103 laps here, a couple stages in there. 110 and laps. Should be a good to 110, okay. Time yeah, is good. even more of the essence. And indeed, it uh, should be a lot of fun. 110 laps around this, the Atlanta Motor Speedway going to be broken down into stages, stage 125, stage 255, and then race into 110 for the completion of this one. Qualifying has just concluded this, of course, our Circle of Cast Race Preview. Make sure you use code JTM at checkout for free shipping on your order, $20 or more, at circlebeatiecast.com, linked in the description below. Welcome to Greg Artlip, Tyler Hunter, both competing in tonight's event. No, there's always drivers that have the broadcasts on. Hopefully we don't say anything about you that you don't like because it's going to be mighty hard to turn off that smart TV or stream of the JTN broadcast. And folks, you, I don't even know why you'd want to turn off a stream. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe. And also, you know, just don't touch that search bar. You, don't touch the dial. Don't mute us. Turn our volume up. We're at the perfect level right now. Just... It's going to be a great night of racing here on JTN. And, Tommy, I think you have tonight's starting lineup, don't you? I sure do, Joe. Give me a little bit of slack here. This is the first time I've broadcasted with you in this league. So if I mess up any names, pronunciations, whatever, uh, bear with me for now. We'll, we'll get uh, familiar in the next coming uh, weeks. Uh, on the poll for tonight, a great lap from Randy Waugh, the 21. He starts first tonight to his outside, Jeremy Menefee. Uh, in the three car. Row number two, ASR Todd in the 11 with Billy WB on his outside. That's row two. Row three, ASR DC 88 in the 88 car with two fast Todd to his outside. Going back to row number four. That's the double zero of Mike Ireland to his outside, the 70 of Tyler Hunter, who's also in the chat. Uh, in row number five, ASR Slingshot in the 12 and Ryan Johnson round out your top 10. ASR GA98 in position number 11 with Randy Pavlo, uh, excuse me, Joseph Landy Pavlon to his outside. ASR Postal, BSR Jimmy Dale, and ASR HUD round out the field of cars tonight. Looks like 15 taken to the track tonight. So it's going to be a challenge for these guys to finish in the top five. Going to be a challenge for those folks towards the back to make their way up through the field. Is the state? What are the stage? Is it top five for stage points? Is that is that what your uh, indication there was, Tommy? Uh, I I believe so. I didn't get that memo. I don't think on okay. the sheet. All right, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. It always depends based on the driver turnout. Would think that that's probably a good number, maybe top four. We will, uh, we will wait for confirmation on that one. But, folks, again, 110 laps tonight around this, the Atlanta Motor Speedway. 
broken down into stages 25 55 and then 110 for the completion so really good breakdown of you know first half of the race is the first two stages and then the second half of the race is the last stage like you know you're supposed to with stages but i digress watching tyler hunter ea 98 out there on track Tommy, what may Atlanta? It's beloved track uh, with this configuration that's going to go away, and we'll we'll never get into that because I know you would be very pointed on the discussion topic. <laughs> but um, Atlanta is really that it's a true racers track, isn't it? Well, it really is. You know, you've got a lot of different lines you can take throughout the corners, and we've seen that this week too. Uh, earlier in races with uh, other leagues that we broadcasted, we have the bottom line really kind of hold its own in turns three and four, but also we've seen guys make some momentum moves around the top, get a good run off the corner down the back straightaway using the high line at a one and two. Certainly, Joe, a lot of uh, drivability all over the racetrack, as well as tire wear. And I've experienced this myself firsthand at racing Atlanta this week. There's tire wear here, and you gotta pay attention to it because some guys are gonna be saving their stuff early on, and later in a the run, they're gonna blow by you on fresher stuff. So. Definitely, if we get green flag pit stops and long green flag runs, watch strategy to play into the hands of these drivers. And is saving those tires, is it about how you attack the corners, is it, or is it more about the line? Which one do you think is the more prevailing factor into keeping the rubber on your good years? In my experience from the past week, I thought it was more of letting off a little bit early, easing yourself into the corner, and throughout the corner, no matter what line you're in, really be careful not to slide your tires. That, I think, is going to be the key for keeping the, the Goodyear Eagles on these cars. And I think, Joe, it could determine the race if we get long range flag runs. It's going to be interesting to see. Again, those stages. So we're going to be in the window to not, make, not have to make a pit stop during Stage 1 and Stage 2. So that's a good thing for these drivers. But that final stage, if it runs clean and green, definitely going to have to make that four-tire green flag pit stop. You're going to want tires before you want gas, but... If you can make it to the end of the stage, I think that's going to be the key to making sure you can at least maybe try to score some stage points, but also keep decent track position. Folks, remember, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button here on JTN. Can't thank you enough for all the support. We're seven subscribers away from 650, another big milestone we're trying to reach by the the end of this month of July at least. You know, I think we said 1,000 by the end of August. I don't think we're going to quite reach that, Tommy. If, unless, I mean, some of the other content we have on here on JTN, it could start taking off too, couldn't it? It sure could, Joe. Hey, we'll get there when we get there at our, 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 our due pace. Uh, I'll tell you one thing to mention right now too. Hey, there's a diecast special going on. If you want to get some diecast, uh, where's the place to go, Joe? At circlewithicast.com and make sure to use code JTN at checkout for free shipping on your order of twenty dollars or more. Well, hey Tommy, drivers getting called to their cars. This is the this is kind of where the butterflies start to start to you know fly around a little bit in your tummy, don't they? Oh, certainly, and and for me too, uh, up in the booth now because you've got a bunch of guys hungry for it. You just hope they can make it through the first couple laps, and uh, hopefully no one's night ends early. That's always the worst getting in an early wreck. So. There's the command to start engines. Engines! Get ready to get this one underway here from Atlanta. Randy Waugh, Jeremy Menifee on row number one. Todd Wilson, Billy WB on row two. And then HN on the 88 to round out your top five for this. Again, 15 competitors here tonight in Atlanta. All competing for one prize. That is the victory here in the heart of the South at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Field makes their way through turns three and four. Fans are all on their feet. Getting ready to watch another action-packed all-star racing event. Can't thank you enough for tuning in here on JTN. Wall with control in that Alabama Crimson Tide. It's number 21 Dodge Charger. We get to the line. Green flag are underway here from Atlanta. Well, here we go. Side by side going into turn number one. Wa side by side to his outside. ASR Todd is hanging with him. Looks like he's going to get the advantage off of two, though. Menifee going to dive back to the bottom in that three car. Going to get to the inside of Wa. Big run coming on the outside. We've seen that prevail. Now down here in three and four, Tommy, you want to be on the bottom. 
Oh, certainly, Joe. A great run for Menifee out of two right there. A lot of passing can get started on the entrance into turn three, and Menifee is going to lead the first lap of this race. Great run so far for that three. GM Goodrun Chevrolet. Think we've seen this before here in Atlanta, wouldn't you say? We sure have uh, quite a few times in the past. Uh, I'll tell you, side by side, still up front. Looks like Wall is still looking. He's not going away just yet. Well, I'm going to have, the, again, the preferred lane down here in three and four. It's that bottom. Going to get a good run. Menifee gets loose on exit. Looks like they almost made contact. Oh, Menifee really had a handful of that car to save. He did a great job keeping it together. That allowed Wall to get a little bit of an advantage. Let's see if he can clear him out of two. Meanwhile, back in third place right there, ASR Todd on hot on their heels. Todd Wilson trying to find his way around these top two. Juan Menifee racing like it's five laps to go. Not 105 laps to go in this one. Juan going to take the lead, though. Full center, that 21 dodge back out front. Meanwhile, the battle for second now begins. Are we starting to see that bottom prevail down in one and two now? I definitely think so. That being said, Menifee's going to get a good run off of two right here. Oh, car around in turn three. That's going to bring out the yellow. The 12 car, Slingshot. Get your replay. I don't... I don't know. Is there contact here, Tommy? Let's see what I can see in my monitor. I think so. I think I think just a little bit because a spin <laughs> like that doesn't come from no contact. I'll tell you that much. You always hear them talk about the arrow push when these guys are close like this making contact. I think that four car on HUD. I make a little bit of contact there with the left rear. Slingshot. Mechanical push. <laughs> Mechanical push. Yep. But uh, unfortunate there for the 12 team. Although it looks like it'll probably buff out there on the USAA Pontiac. Hey, you like Pontiac? I sure do. I love Pontiac. <laughs> what a tie-in. <laughs> uh, good news for that 12-car slingshot, though, Joe. Damage, uh, like we've seen in, in a lot of these NRL leagues we broadcast on moderate. So a hit like that not going to ruin your race, which is great to see. Always love to see it. Going to come down the pit lane. Kind of a mixed bag of strategies, it looks like. 21 going to stay out. That's your leader, Wa, the 88 of DC, uh, Dave Chin. Todd Prim, too fast. Todd. Mike Ireland. Hud staying out, but he'll probably have to come down the pit lane. And then BSR Jimmy Dale. But then a bunch of other guys down on pit road. I, I really thought everyone would be coming down. I think I kind of would too, you know, given that we have the stage breaks happening, you know when they're going to happen, you can kind of afford to, you know, come and take some tires, why not? Because you know you're not going to go a lap down or anything like that. You're going to have that stage break to gather things back up. Uh, but these guys that, that did pit now, they're going to have a good, decent advantage on tires. Not going to be night and day, but perhaps uh, maybe night and dusk. <laughs> I don't know, we saw that a couple laps meant a lot on the tires. I mean, you, you just look at uh, the finish, the Xfinity Series race here on uh, Saturday with NASCAR, and I know NR is not the most accurate skin sim. They don't laser scan their tracks, but um, still always, it, it always has seemed to kind of up the ante when it comes to the amount of tire wear. It certainly does. It'll change maybe depending on your track version, but this one they're running right here is one of the classics, Joe. Uh, I really, really like this version of Atlanta that they have tonight. It's fun to drive. It's fun to race on. And uh, I'm happy I get to broadcast it, too, because uh, I know it's going to be a good show. Thus far, I've already seen some intense battles up front, too. Tiny person writes in, yay, stages, so this will be a long race. Only 110 lap race here, so stage one's going to come to its end at lap 25, lap 55, end at stage two. 110's the total race length. I, I can now see how that is confusing with our graphics package. Do you agree, Tommy? I can see that. Yeah. Do you think Bristol, the graphics dog, needs to figure it out? Or is he a good boy still? Oh, he's always going to be a good boy no matter what. But. That's right. <laughs> well, 
but Law gonna have control here on the restart. Then it's the 88, 47, double zero, 98. Menifee came back down the pit lane. Interesting call there from the three team. I am actually very puzzled by that. Maybe just trying to have some fun, run back up through the field. Well, it is a lot of fun to do that, actually, Joe. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, I think we've all been there at some point. We're like, yeah, why not? It could be a lot of fun. I mean, at a track like this, too, you really you have that opportunity. And with stages, you know that if you maybe don't get where you'd like, you've still got another chance to kind of close that field back together. They'll have a good pit stall, too, when the end of the stage comes, because you, you have to think everyone's going to have to pit there at the end of the stage if this thing runs uh, to lap 25 clean and green. So Wa going to have control again, then 88, Dave Chin. Todd Prim, too fast. Todd, Mike Ireland, Greg Hartlip, your top five here for the restart. Then Todd Wilson, Tyler Hunter, Billy WB, Billy Rose, Ryan Johnson, Joseph, Landy Pavlon, Slingshot, Jimmy Dale, Hud, and Menifee again, once again, back down on the pit lane. So some, they're trying to iron something out there. Nicholas Curry well, right in, let's go 1170, and Billy Rose <laughs> at number six card. But go ahead, Tommy. Well, I was going to say, uh, you, uh, you just mentioned Landy Pavlon back there in the 10th position. He's got a nice Lexus out there. So not only a Pontiac, but a Lexus as well. That's something. Whenever we go to a different league and a new, new track, see some new cars, you always get to see the, the, the fun paint schemes the guys have got out there and the manufacturers they run as well. Always fun. Hey, NR is the game of ultimate creation. You can do anything you want, so we help showcase that here on JTN. Got Cadillacs out here, Lexus, Lexi, I guess. Indeed. Okay. You <laughs> get ready to go back. Green Randy Wah with control here on the restart. He waits to see that emerald flag fly. Down away we go. Green flag once again here from Atlanta. Now, those single file starts really help out the leader. Uh, when you see that green flag drop, you don't have a guy to your outside or inside trying to get around you right away. However, you still got to pay attention because that's a good run at that 88 to get using that draft. That means the inside down the back straightaway. DC 88, Dave Chin to the inside of Randy Waugh for the top spot. 88 going to be in the preferred lane down here in three and four. Going to be clear of the 21. Move the 88. Cadillac to the lead. Well, for the second straight starter or restart, Randy Waugh uh, not maintaining the lead from the drop of the green flag around the stripe for the first time after that. 20. What do you attribute that to? Well, there's a couple things, Joe. I mean, this being uh, open setup tonight, uh, that's something that these guys might be building into the setup. You know, have a car that maybe takes off a little bit slower on the sh in the short run, but it's really set up well on the long run. And we've talked about that before with open setup racing, the, the variability uh, that the drivers get to have with these cars. So, not the greatest takeoff speed. Wow, really big moment. No! Oh, Contact with Ireland. They're around hard into the inside safer barrier. Caution. Up off the ground for Wall after that hit to the inside. Rear end of that 21 Alabama Crimson Tide. Or it looks like it just, well, it just lost the Iron Bowl. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that same thing, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> the replay hits the apron. That's, I mean, that's what causes that 21 to get crazy. And then Ireland, wrong place, wrong time. Oh boy, if, if that car had long run speed like we were talking about, it might have just evaporated right there. Uh, dramatic uh, kind of way things have worked out for a pole sitter. Losing the lead on the restarts and a huge moment there really, really shakes things up towards the front of the field. Here you see the contact from our stationary camera on turn three. Mm. That's a heavy lick, too. Look at those tire marks going into that inside wall. Just the way it lifted the back half of that car clear off the ground by a couple feet shows you the, the viciousness of that impact.
They both do take that rear end hit. It's like Ireland might have a little bit of front end damage. I don't see as much on the 21. That could just be the Ford model, too. But wait and see. It ain't gonna stay out again here, though. I'm gonna have those fresher tires right behind him on the restart with that 11 of Wilson. Yeah, now with a couple heat cycles on them and more laps being ran on this set, now you're really gonna start to see the difference in tires. If he can pull off the line well when the green flag drops again, he'll be okay, but if this thing goes green to the end of the stage, I don't know if he's gonna be able to hang on to that lead position, but whether or not he does will be very telling to what happens uh, and, and following restarts all throughout this race. Now we saw, you know, we've seen at Atlanta, it's the slick racetrack, a lot of the surface is just, that's what the surface is, it's really slick, a lot of tire wear. We can go down the laundry list of things that make this track great. The reason it's great, though, is that it's a challenge to these drivers, right? Well, yeah, that's how you get great racing. Uh, you know, there's, there's challenges to every racetrack, more or less, you know, right? Sometimes the challenges are different. Nowadays, you see a lot of tracks where the challenges just become uh, somehow getting around the car in front of you when you have no air on your nose in a downforce-dependent car. Atlanta's a track that kind of takes that away. These days, not so much because you still have, I mean, as you can see, the, the package differences that we have these days. Uh, but in NR2003, this is all in the driver's hands, baby. Uh, how they get around this joint, what their setup's like, how they wheel it around. A lot of, it's a driver's track. A lot of, lot of stuff uh, matters when you're behind the wheel here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Folks, can't thank you enough for tuning in here to JTN tonight. As always, make sure if you haven't already, hit that like button on the video and subscribe. It does a lot to help support us. Those are the two best ways to help support us. But if you want to go that extra mile, check out the JTN merch store. Kind of, we've been working, refining our lineup. Got some great Tommy's World merch up on there. Different driver merch, as well as, you know, our JTN logo merch and whatnot. Go check it out now, available at JTN Merch Store, linked in the description below. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Johto Network, and on Facebook, at Johto Network, to make sure you get posts anytime new content goes live here on the JTN YouTube or on our uh, podcast page with the Fake Racers Podcast. Again, folks, can't thank you enough for all your support. Tommy getting ready to go back green here. We saw the single file restart that 21 last time, was able to get a good jump on the 88. But that second car was able to get momentum up. Do you see the same thing happening in here with Wilson now lining up in second? Well, possibly. And remember that 88 stayed out now, and it's got some multiple heat cycles on these tires, and they're worn out a little bit. So it's going to be it's going to be a, a challenge to get off the line here on a restart. Make sure you don't spin those tires. That's what it could come down to, Joe, uh, if that 11 is going to get around. We saw the lead being taken right off the off the restart at a turn two getting a good run down the back stretch and using that drafting help we talked about it for the past week joe how atlanta lends itself to some drafting advantages for the car behind and then making the move into turn three i think is where if we are going to see it uh, is where that pass is going to happen and that's where we've seen all the passes made here at atlanta for the last three four five years is through three and four down the front straight away you're complete by one and two It'll be interesting to see if Wilson can do that here for the lead, or if Chin in the lead, it will be DC88 will be able to maintain said lead. Yeah, and if you're not done with that pass by the exit of turn two or, or into turn one, you're gonna have a your hands full with a car with good momentum on the outside. Speaking of momentum, we're about to pick it up here, going back green here at Atlanta, and away they go. Not a good restart by the 88. Wilson gonna be all over the back bumper. Yeah, Todd, Todd Wilson with a great restart right there. I mean, he got really close. Didn't make a move into one. Let's see if he just kind of stays in line and follows DC here on the back straightaway. Not close enough to make a move this time. Not close enough and not closing the gap. That 88 Cadillac looking good on the old tires. It's pro probably isn't driving like a, a your road car Cadillac, though, is it? No, probably not. And <laughs> I... I 
I don't think so. Maybe maybe if the tires were a little bit more, but but not yet anyway. Are looking to the inside, looking for some clean air on the nose. Wilson gonna get to the bottom, down the back straightaway. He's was barely there for a second, but that 88 able to power on the outside to maintain that lead. Still battling for the position. What you saw right there was was that outside line, a middle line, really being used to de defend very well. If you're able to stop that car's momentum on the outside uh, by using the outside, kind of you know it kind of tightens up the corner exit when he exits two side by side, uh, so they don't get that chance into turn number three. Or they're on back, Tyler Hunter to the inside of Too Fast Todd for the fourth position. Hunter on newer tires than that 47, going to make the pass, Billy. Rose, Billy WB, gonna make the pass as well as Pavlin in the 68 Lexus. Well, I'll tell you what, Todd Wilson struggling a little bit there in turn number four. He's hit the apron twice, two laps in a row. And uh, that's gonna give the spot to this 98 car for the first time tonight. We've seen him up towards the front of the field. Things getting a little wiggle wobbly off the turn number two. 98 GA gonna be trying to make his way around that 88 of DC. Wow, look, it's Wait, Super Speedway Racing at Atlanta, and you didn't have to change the configuration. <laughs> How about it? Well, just about, Joe. I'll tell you what, these guys uh, are actually having to lift, though, and that's going to make a, a difference. Here we go down the back straightaway. Look, and that 98's looking. He's looked, he looked in turn one, he looked in turn three a little bit. Too far back to make a move, but he's at least making his presence be known. You talked about Wilson hitting the apron. Now it looks like he's trying to run a little higher through three and four. Is that that adjustment that you have to make as a race car driver when you make a couple mistakes there on the bottom? Yeah, you got to rein it in a little bit there. Kind of reset yourself. You know, be calm. We have five laps to go in this stage, Joe. These guys are fighting hard for stage points in the stage win. Every point matters here in All Star Racing. Wilson had to back off. He had to check up for that 88. That's going to allow the 98 to get on by and the 6 to get to his inside. Well, the Bush Light Ford up there. But he's got a 4 on the side. It's a 6. Nice looking machine. Looking for a nice spot in the stage as well. With that 4 to go in the stage. To the inside of that 11. Not going to be able to get there just yet. Battles on though for fifth. Pavlin in that 68 to the bottom of Tyler Hunter. Hunter won last time we were here live with All-Star Racing for the All-Star Race at Texas in that number 70 car. Texas and Atlanta, very similar tracks. I think that 70 is just kind of hanging out for now. He'll be up towards the front by the end of this thing for sure. Driver that definitely subscribes to the idea of you have to make it to the end to have a chance at the victory. 98 trying to get it done on the outside now. The GA is looking anywhere he can to try and get around DC up front. Wasn't able to do it on the back straightaway. Through three and four, took a high line. That allows Todd Wilson to get back to the inside. Two to go in segment one. Wilson doing a good job in that 11 car now. Trying to set his eyes on the ultimate prize, the victory here in stage number one. Trying to find his way around the 88. Dave Chen, though, doing a great job in that Cadillac. Well, he sure is. He's, he's been so calm up front and mistake-free. Right there, getting really close. White flag in the stage, one to go. Big run coming there from the six. Oh, oh contact! No. More contact, oh, 11 no. to Wilson into the wall. We stay green. They keep it straight for now, but that's allowed DC to get a nice gap out ahead. He's going to come around turns three and four. So he should be picking up this first stage win of the night right here. Coming off of turn number four to the green and white checkered flag. DC takes it. And a thrilling run to the end of stage number one. Let's get you a replay. Those boys will be coming to pit road in a lap or two, and then we'll get a chance to talk with the driver of the 88 after those pit stops. What'd you see there going through one and two, Tommy? Well, we, we got some cars really just kind of fighting as hard as they can through one, and things really narrow up uh, in that corner. As you're turning down into the corner, space kind of runs out because everyone's got to make sure they get a high enough entry that they don't uh, apex too early, and things just kind of tightened up right there a little bit. 
Hmm. Well, we'll talk to Dave and get his perspective. I have confirmed that he will be able to come down here after pit stops, and we'll be able to talk to him. Ain't it fun? Cool to talk with Dave. It's cool to talk with the driver who's starting the race. Wanna? Also cool to talk with our fans during the race. Nicholas Curry, I think I already mentioned. Me, but not the boys. Also tuning in. Glad, glad that we're at your favorite track. It's always a good start. Always a good start when we're at someone's favorite track. I'll tell you what, you know, we're uh, going to be broadcasting some more races on JTN. A couple of which at my favorite track, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Yeah, it's tomorrow night, Ricky and I. Ricky's home track, of course. We'll be back with Bomb Squad Racing Cup Series action at New Hampshire tomorrow night. 9.05 p.m. Eastern Time there. Hobo Racing mods the following Thursday at Airborne, then the following Thursday after that at Iowa. 8.50 for both of those races. And then another track you like, Tommy, Watkins Glen with the Bomb Squad Racing Trucks, Cups, and then Xfinity Series August 4th, 5th, and 6th. All those races presented by our friends at TWB Technologies, live only on JTN. I don't know what Airborne is, but all those other tracks I like, except for Iowa. Uh, not, not so much Iowa. Not an Iowa fan? No, not really. I think it's a polarizing track. Some people love it, others not so much. I'm in the not so much camp. Like Ireland gonna win the race off of pit road. I believe that means it's time for, uh, to bring in our stage winner. Well, it sure is, Joe, and here he is. A stage one win that, well, at the end there, got a little, little dicey, but you held on. Dave, congratulations on winning stage one. Yeah, thank you, guys. A little tight up there. I feel bad. I think I dripped it up a little bit and got into uh, Todd. I hate that. I don't want to win them like that. Still a long way to go and a lot of hard racing left in this race. Now, one thing you did is, is you stayed out that whole stage one. Talk about the tire wear at this racetrack. You know, we've seen this surface be really abrasive before, but what's it like for you out there right now? Uh, tire wear is pretty bad at this track, but a couple of cautions we had, I just was gambling that we have, you know, one or two more. I just stayed out for the track position because out front is the best place to be for sure. Absolutely. And would that be your, your kind of go-to for this rest of the race? Just stay out as much as you can, be out front? Yeah, as long as the tires are holding up decent, I'm going to stay out. I'm not going to pit. <laughs> Dave, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. I know they're building a casino, I believe, outside of turns three and four. So since that gamble paid off, I think you're probably going to end up being the first customer in there. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. Congratulations on stage one win. Go get them the rest of this one. Thank y'all so much. And Tommy, always a great opportunity to talk with the drivers here in All Star after a stage victory like that for Dave. I mean, you could, you could be a little disappointed maybe at how things shook out there at the end, but I didn't see him do anything wrong. No, I was just hard racing at the end of a stage. I mean, that's what stage racing's about. That's what they're, what they're looking for out here to make it exciting each and every lap. So uh, that, that's that's a byproduct of that. And uh, it doesn't look like anyone's damaged too much out of that uh, ordeal. It will be just fine uh, for the rest of the season. Could you tell Tommy's bias against stage racing there? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that 70 car of Tyler Hunter, Mr. Where Did He Come From, he's up towards the front right now in second place after pit stops. We talked about it. We said, you know, he's probably going to be up here towards the end. Well, how about right now after stage one, heading into stage two here? A guy that's always very patient with trying to make his way to the front, believes in the curse of the broadcast race, was able to, uh, to break that curse last time out when we were here with All-Star. Hoping that it's broken. Maybe we can get to victory lane here tonight in that 70 Valvoline Camaro. Then in third, it's going to be Ryan Johnson in the 59, Billy WB. In sixth, or in fourth in the sixth car. And then rounding out your top five, Pavlin, Landy Pavlin in that Lexus number 68. GA 98, Slingshot, Randy Waugh, Todd Wilson, Mike Ireland. Too fast, Todd. Todd Prem and Jimmy Dale. And coming off a of pit road, it's ASR Hood and Jeremy Menefee for this restart. Coming at you for lap 31 of 110. 25 laps getting ready to go for it here in stage number two. 
You like the stages, so I, though? The stages shake out good for you here? They do a good job with them here. Oh, uh, sure, absolutely. Well, I mean, it, it did uh, provide a little bit of excitement there towards the end, and also some strategy calls, too. Um, that 88 was able, knowing that there was a stage coming up when everybody was bound to come down the pit road, able to stay out here and uh, get that stage win. That's the strategy for Dave up front. Let's see him take the green flag once again. Away they go to the start of stage number two here at Atlanta. The 8 gets a good jump, about two car lengths over that 70 of Hunter. Tyler going to try to get a good run down through one and two, going to really do a late entry. Further on back, though, that 68 of Pavlin. Really looking wicked loose on entry. Boy, it sure was. And, you know, that car, it was kind of making its way up through the field. That 68 was towards the end of the last stage. So he might have it set up pretty loose to start the run, but maybe it gets better as the tires wear compared to these other guys. And that could be very vital, but you got to hang on to it uh, to start on, on cold ones. What is it? You got to keep all four tires on it for the 25 laps here? Yeah, you, you definitely do. Oh, Ryan Johnson in his 59 Buffalo Wild Wings Chevrolet up in third position right now, and he's looking pretty racy. Looking pretty good in that 59. I actually went to a restaurant that was less cautions out. I'll tell you the story in a second. Let's see what happened. 21 slow down the back straightaway. Randy Waugh, full sitter here tonight with, again, da already had damage on the back end. Let's see what happens. And it looks like maybe just going to go for a little bit of a spin in that second groove. 11 car to the inside. Here's the replay. No contact, just maybe the air changing on that rear spoiler. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of uh, something we've seen before when guys get rear end damage, Joe. Uh, when they back into the wall like we saw that 21 do uh, a little bit ago. Uh, something in that rear end just ain't right, and the car gets a lot looser than it originally was. And that 21, I'm sure, has a handful to deal with after the damage he incurred earlier. No matter how much you fix it, it seems to always still be there. <laughs> and if the, the crew chief tells you, oh, it's fine, buddy, you know he's lying to you. Yeah, they just want you out of the pit lane and back out on the track. That's all they care they about. They just want to get back to eating their ice cream. <laughs> 88 Dave Chin though he's probably feeling pretty good staying out front leading some more laps here Dirty Mo Media Junior Nation Appreciation <laughs> Well you heard him in the interview that's the place where he wants to be and if things stay this way I mean we could be talking to him again pretty shortly too so you have that 88 running well and in in hey everybody wants to be first at these races that's for sure if you ain't first, I mean, that's, that's racing. If you ain't first, you're last, right? That's that's right. No such thing as being consistent to win a championship, Joe. I'm gonna give you a mic. Oh, wait, where I was talking after we again, folks, go check out the Fake Racers podcast with myself, Davey Hazard, and new co-host Matthew Steelman. Um, here on the JTN YouTube as well as our podcast platforms, uh, go to anchor.com slash JT or anchor.fm slash JTN. You can find the full list of our uh, podcast partner platforms or whatever you want to call them. But uh, Tommy, I, we were talking after we're like, I, I was like, I'll just, I'm just going to give Tommy a microphone and a camera and just let him talk for as long as he wants about everything he finds wrong with current uh, stock car racing in America. And I feel like that would, that might, I, I don't know if it'd be entertaining, but I think it would give you some, some, uh, I don't know. I think it would just maybe blow can, some steam you, off for you. What's the maximum file size limit on YouTube? Well, I mean, you could live stream it. Then there right. is none. Well, because I'm just saying it, it it's going to be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong, though, here with the All-Star Racing League. Remember, you can check out the link. Uh, we got a link in the video description where you can sign up with the boys here at All-Star Racing. It's I believe it's ASR2K3Racing.net. Or may AS2K3Racing.net. I apologize if I'm getting that wrong, but I do know it is for sure linked in the video description below. So go check it out if you're looking for a new league to run. To, not to broadcast in, that's our job, uh, to go racing here with the boys at All-Star Racing. also want to shout out our friends at AutoSim, the new version of AutoSim coming out tomorrow, I do believe, for public release. 
Having some internet connection issues. Should be coming back now. It, it, it spiked, Tommy. It spiked, but we should be back and stable. Hope you, hope you folks at home can still hear us. I'm being told we can still be heard, so that's good. Um, and then there's a deep left uh, drive to left center <laughs> field. Castellanos. <laughs> Man, I... Castellanos, he came up through the Tigers development system, and then, uh, you know, he was finally good, and we were bad, so we traded him to the Cubs, and then the Reds obviously signed him that offseason, and he's just had a, he's had a lot of meme potential since then, so that's that's good for him. Think about that. If, if the Tigers were good and he never got traded, we wouldn't have the moments we've had with Castellanos. So. Hey, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> or everything... You can either look at it like that, or everything is predetermined for you, and it's a script that you just have to follow lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. I don't know. Whichever way it makes you feel better, I guess. I was expecting you to say that because I have it on my script here. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Anyway, we're going to be going back green this time. Pace car lights are off. Uh, the 88 car, who you've seen up front, winning the stage, Dave Chin doing a good job of leading under, under these yellow laps. Hey man, I've seen Rex happen under yellow before. It it, it does happen. It does happen. I I think we've both been involved in some of them before too. Mm -hmm. Probably do some texting and driving. Don't text and drive, folks. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't yeah, be I think, you. No, I mean. All right. Anyway, yeah. Here we go into turn number. Th not 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 in real life, but at least in sim racing. You know. Yeah. Uh huh. Whatever you say. Don't text and drive, actually. I, I'm it's, a big advocate for that. People need to pay attention on roads. Anyway. Anyway, getting ready to go back. Green flag racing. Fans on their feet once again. Dave Chen with Control Tyler Hunter, Ryan Johns, Billy WB. And Greg Artlip, your top five here. As we get ready to go back, green flag racing from the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Down to the restart we go. Green flag once again from Atlanta. Got to wonder, Joe, how aggressive Tyler Hunter's going to be this early on. We know he's patient, waits for the right opportunities to get by. Well, he doesn't want to lose too many spots as right now. That 59, Ryan Johnson on the inside, looking to take away second place. Oh, oh contact! Problem. Bing jumped there, six. Billy W B into the wall, slingshot hits the wall. No further contact, but that sixth car, uh, I think uh, he might have got Punterino down there to turn three. Well, I'll tell you what, that uh, that spin for for Billy W B looked a lot like uh, one of our earlier incidents, just leaning on that left rear quarter panel a little bit from the guy behind, and oh man, there you see it, bam, there she went. That one definitely didn't look like Arrow. No, not not so much. Uh, Pavlon just making a move to the inside. Misjudged a little bit and maybe, you know. Six maybe, maybe comes down, down a little, little bit. bit, yeah. Yeah. That's what we in the business call a racing deal, I think. <laughs> I feel like we keep using that phrase, and eventually you use a phrase too many times, and you discount it. I suppose, I suppose things things kind of shift, right? So, obviously, there's intentional wrecking, um, but <laughs> but I feel like the the racing deal is the new somebody made a mistake, and now we don't want to say they made a right. mistake. No one wants right, to make yeah. mistakes. Yeah. But see, everybody makes mistakes, and everybody has those days, you know. Boy, you got that right, Joe. Oh, problems for Pavel on a pit road. He overshot his stall a little bit. A lot of cars towards the back of the field pinning here, Joe, while our leaders stay out. 98 overshoots the stall, too. Ugh. Pit road miscues, they can absolute, absolutely destroy you. They can lose races, they can lose stages, they can lose championships. Trust me on it, folks. You don't want to mess up on pit road. Coming from experience? For what it's worth, yes and no. Tommy doesn't make mistakes, folks. He is the perfect human being. Yeah. 
I'm not just gonna get right. I'll take the compliment. I'm not gonna disagree with you on that. <laughs> when I, when I, we were, we were joshing around, and I said something along the lines of, I apologize to you, Tommy. I am wrong. You were right. You are the superior human. And it was very awkward in the boardroom because it was just you and no, me. And I, Oh, and I accept it, though, because, right. you know, finally somebody admits it. <laughs> Ask the characters here on JTN. That's why you want to make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on, because you get some of the best content on the web for free here on JTN. Don't have to pay all those, you know, Dirt Vision, Speed 51, uh, big fees to watch some great racing on your weeknights when you need your fill. JTN has you covered, as always. That's our pitch. Better than Dirt Vision, better than Speed 51, better than Track Pass, and we're free. Yeah, you can't beat the price of JCN. Let me tell you. Broadcasting, I'll tell you. Can't beat it. Folks, remember, if you have a league, too, you can contact us at Joto, Joto Network at gmail.com or on our Facebook if you want to find inquire about getting your league broadcast on the premiere and our 2003 broadcasting platform, JTN. Is that fair to say? I think so. I I always look to you when I make those statements, because you, you're someone that's very confident when making those right. types of well, statements, so if you're yeah. okay with saying it, then I'm okay with saying it, you know what I mean? Why not? Even if it's false. It's all good. Don't worry, folks. Most of our broadcasts aren't this big of ego fests. Yeah, this is very we're on one tonight. We are on one. I guess that's because we're in the all we're broadcasting for all star racing, so that means we're all stars, right? We're the all stars of broadcasting. Is that how that works? Once again, I'm not gonna say no. I'll, I will take the compliments, but <laughs> <laughs> getting ready to go back. Green flag racing, eighty eight fifty nine seventy. 1147, your top five. Double zero, 33, 21, 12, 68, 98, 4, 3, 6. Rest of your field here. How many retirees out of this one, Tommy? Only one. ASR so Postal. Far, yeah, so far none yet right. uh, from this field. So glad to see everybody is still running even after a couple of the hard hits we've seen. Uh, those cars... Uh, Maybe not up to speed like they once were, but at least they're still out there. Then it could matter at the end. I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm good once as I ever was. Every week, every broadcast, you hit me with a new phrase I haven't heard before, or maybe haven't heard in a long time. And that was it for the week? Yeah. Gotta, gotta love those Toby Keith songs from the 2000s. <laughs> I won't sing for you folks, I won't sing. I don't think I've sung in a while. Won't make you endure that as we get ready to go back. Green flag racing. Green flag. Top three, four, five. All single file. They're on back 21, 33. Actually, I guess 68. Pavlin trying to make his way back up towards the front. Oh, no. Oh. Well, between Pavlin and Jimmy Dale in turn three. Oh. Hang oh, on to it. no. Hang on to it. Oh, Hunt no. to the back of Billy Rose. Oh, oh no. Over. No. Oh, still rolling. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's a good thing we're running Gen 6 here, folks. Oh, my goodness. Huge crash in turn four from... Uh, it didn't look like much was happening to start that, and then all of a sudden... See what causes it's... these guys to check up, Tommy. But like you said, all of a sudden. All of a sudden, this bush light can starts rolling all across the screen. When they say kick the can down the road, they don't usually mean it when it comes to race cars. Like you said, that, that bush... What is that, the Gen X? 
or is it the Gen X or the no? It's the Gen X, right? That's the, that four is. I believe so. Yes. The Gen X Bush says to the Bush Light, "You're not gnarly, dude." <laughs> that's that's bu a bummer. <laughs> Radical. Now we just talked about us not having any retirees out of this race, but that incident is going to give us our first two of the night. ASR HUD as well as BSR Jimmy Dale, the first two out of this event tonight. Unfortunate for those two drivers. But we trek on. Folks, remember the JTN merch store is a great way to help support us here on JTN if you like the content, if you like what we do. Um, you want to help support the brand, check out the JTN merch store. We have driver merch. We also have... Uh, for some of our friends here at JTN, Joseph Weaver, Randall Coleman merch dropped this last week, Matthew Steelman, Davey Hazard, got Tommy's World, Tommy Bordeaux merch, and then of course, JTN merch, because that's, you know, that's at the end of the day. The classic. The classics. Um, but you check all those out, we're also going to have a fundraiser coming with one of those shirts up there right now. Um, our Bristol producer, T, but more information coming in on that one. Can't thank you enough. Guy, or folks for all that you do for us here on JTN. Also, I, I posted yesterday kind of a breakdown of the end of the Quaker State 400. If you feel so inclined, go check it out after the conclusion of tonight's broadcast. Tell us what you think. Maybe you agree with Kyle Bush's comments at, in post-race, or maybe you disagree. Tell, tell us what you think of that, too, on that video, and uh, tell us what you think about teammates helping each other and kind of navigating dirty air. Tommy, I think that's... If I say dirty air three times fast, I think you, you'd you probably disappear. Something along those lines. Uh, the like the titular phrase, uh, the art of racing in the dirty air. I'll tell you what. Uh, Did that I one get you? Yeah, that's the right I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good at those titles, man. Yeah. We're gonna, we're, I should have saved it, though, for like an actual video explaining dirty air. But well, for what it's worth, Joe, you mentioned a little bit right there about teammates. Now, I have no problem with that. That's fine. Uh, if it's a situation like that where you know you got one teammate, he's left down, you know, and, and he's trying to help the other guy win, I, I'm in the camp. I don't care. That's that's perfectly fine to me. I would hate to be on the other end of that, but you know, mm -hmm. I think it's per perfectly reasonable what they did and. And they, they mission accomplished. They got their win. Hey, it was fine when Joey Logano did it in the spring, and people freaked out about it then. And then you know Kyle Busch doesn't win a race, a driver people don't like, and then all of a sudden it's okay. Not not saying that's you, Tommy. Not saying that's you. I'm just saying <laughs> general consensus was a little more positive to the same thing occurring. We we talk about that too in that video. So go check it out. Um, there's also there is also a wonderful example of Fox's broadcasting as Ryan Blaney is making the pass for the lead off of turn four on Larson. They switched to a Ryan Blaney fan in the stands. <laughs> that was my favorite minute, moment of that video because I, I could say something along the lines, okay, now we're going to show the fans for no reason. Okay, back to the Blaney to the inside. It was like, oh man. It doesn't get much more classic than that. <laughs> it's you love to see it, but you also hate to see it because you didn't actually get to see it. Again, but we always show you the things here on JTN. That's why uh, we I think we've been told a couple times we're better than Fox, we're better than NBC. Don't agree with it, but, you know, I'll take it. Tommy tells me just to take the compliments. And we do. Crystal always appreciates them, too, in our uh, producer wagon. Also, when he's scrambling on pit road after the race to talk with these folks. <laughs> He does it all, man. He does it all. Guy that's led it all tonight, it seems like, is this 88 Dave Chin. Early strategy to stay out. Got him the lead. Now he's had this stranglehold on the lead since about the middle of stage one. Around lap 10. He's pretty much led it all the way here as we're coming to green flag on lap number 47 of 110. Again, stage two coming to its completion on lap 55. Bill makes their way off. of turn number four. Green flag. There goes Dave up and away. Johnson behind him in the 59. I'll tell you what, didn't really get a good chance to see this 59 and, and how he's able to catch Dave Chan up front. 
uh, with that last restart, but let's see now. He's getting really close off of turn two. Oh, I'll tell you what, Chin, way back and forth there on the exit. Ryan Johnson was really good at Charlotte and Texas when we ran the points races there earlier this year, so not surprising to see this 59 having another good night on the mile and a half. Todd Wilson in fourth right there. Behind Tyler Hunter, those two, we'll see if they can catch the front two. They've separated themselves a little bit, uh, but, but they're starting to close the gap just a touch. Are you working together with that guy to maybe get up to those leaders, or do you just want to pass them? Uh, it depends. If I think I can definitely, if I, if I think I'm faster, uh, and I know I'm faster, I'm going to try and get around as, as quick as I can. Uh, but if I'm like, yeah, maybe I don't have the car, you know, with with open set and, and all that. If I don't quite have the car. Yeah, let's just let's just work together. You're going to lose a lot of time when you try and fight uh, with another driver. Meanwhile, speaking of fighting. There comes Tyler Hunter on the inside of Johnson in turn three. The mini car, and it seems to need a couple laps underneath them to get his car rolling. He's going to take over the second position. Wilson going to keep pushing him down the front straightaway. Johnson with a good run down, uh, up high down into turn one. Wilson trying to follow Hunter there for third place. He's going to get it, and now look for second. Hunter had to get off the gas, coming off of turn number two to avoid hitting the wall. Wilson now to the inside in that 11. M&M's, thank you, Heroes, Toyota. A little bit close on the entry there between that 11 and 70. Yeah, they like each oh, other. There's man. a lot of confidence there. Yeah. Or at least there is now. <laughs> Johnson to the inside of Hunter. Things have flipped in this two through four positions very rapidly in these past couple laps. But all the hit fightings allowed the 47 and 98 to catch up. That's GA in the 98. Too fast time in the 47. Oh, Pavlin into the wall further on back. He's going through the grass. He's around. That's going to bring out the yellow. And that might be Looks the stage like ender. It could be. It's going to be close. We will see. Unfortunately for Pavlin, the end of his night. It's your replay. Sixty-eight gonna get tight through the center of turns three and four. Gonna make contact with the outside wall. That's gonna send him for a spin. Heavy contact with that outside wall too, and it's no, there's no safer barrier down the front straightaway here. Yeah, there isn't, and that really, I mean, head on like that, how we hit, I mean, that engine taking a lot of that impact there. 68 just slides to park it. So I am hearing from officials here, the All-Star Racing Cup Series officials, that it's going to be two to go in the stage. The stage, no matter the yellow and, and the outcome of, of when we go back green, the stage will end on lap, the end of lap 55. So two to go in the stage this time by. Now you're staying out to get stage points, but we might go back green, get one to go at the completion of 55, so you're kind of playing a little bit of a strategy game here. See you guys coming down pit road, 11, 59, 70, three of our top five. Dave in that 88, though, he's going to decide to stay out. Boy, that could really shake things up, Joe, because, you know, we've seen so far uh, a good amount of yellows early on, but as cars, uh, a couple now have retired from the event, more room out on the racetrack for these guys. Possibly the, the opportunity for less yellow flags. It's not a guarantee anymore on whether or not you're going to have a yellow. So that 88 staying out up front. Uh, interesting trade off there between new tires and a new load of fuel in the car and stage points. For the 88, you, you have the guaranteed four points. You have the, or the guaranteed maximum amount of stage points here. Um. So I, that's the case where you're going to stay out because you're, you're kind of looking at, okay, I can lose these points, 
try to win the race, but I can also gar guarantee these points, because you don't know if you're going to win the race, right? Um, then you got those guys that are kind of on the edge. They know they got fast cars. They know they have something uh, to try to maybe take the lead here, get a victory. You kind of have to play that, that game, right? This is what stages do. They make you play some extra games that you wouldn't normally play with the racing. So, again, going to stay out. 47, too fast. Todd also going to stay out. So they'll get stage points here. We get one to go in the stage. JDog88 writes in a home track. Welcome home. Also, uh, JDog, I know you're writing in on Sunday... This, the All-Star Racing, got the link in the description if you're looking for a good league to get started in. All-Star Racing has a bunch of great racing um, all throughout the week, so you can go check their, out their website. And that goes for anybody that's looking for an uh, NR2003 league to participate in. Go check it out, figure out the rules, the uh, um, eligibility, I guess. I feel like I'm reading off like a raffle disclaimer. A little slip, but using that E-word, but... It's like uh, Hunter lost a couple spots there on pit road. Yeah, he did not a great stop for the 70 team. They're going to have some work to do to try and get back up towards the front. We've seen them go from the back towards the front of the field already, though. Not too much of a concern for them. We know they'll probably be able to make that up uh, quite easily here. But this stage will end here the next time the leaders cross the line. Pace Crunch is still on at this point. See how this plays out here. Coming to the end of the stage, Dave, T Dave Chin gonna sweep them here at Atlanta. Opening two stages. i look to sweep the race. But he'll be the stage winner here. There go the pace car lights, Tommy. Okay, so Joe getting word here that race control is going to add a, one more lap of this yellow here. That'll allow these guys that stayed out to come down, get some fuel, get some tires, but they're going to lose all kinds of track position. That's the trade off, Joe, of between stage points and, and staying out. Now, they're lucky they have this opportunity that uh, the caution fell when it did, and we're going to get one more lap here where they can pit. Um, but, of course, like you mentioned, missing out on that track position, you heard from Dave Chin earlier how important staying out front was. And if you do pit right here, which I assume a lot of these cars will, it's going to push you back. Put you back. And we always talk about you don't want to be in the soup. Now you're going to be in that soup, hoping you don't drown. Have you ever drowned in soup? What's that, Joe? Have you ever drowned in soup? No, I I don't like soup. Oh, you're not a soup guy? No, I just don't get the point. Hmm. There's good soup. You know what my favorite soup is? Bet you can't guess. Vegetable soup? No. Two more guesses, because you get three for Dale. Tomato soup? Nope. SpaghettiOs? That's not soup, but that's your third guess. Oh. Chicken lemon rice soup. Yeah, see, I, I don't get the point of that. Why why drink that? You well, you don't eat. drink it. I mean, I don't. you eat it with a spoon. And it, that's like thicker soup, so it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like well, a meal. Mercifully, uh, pit stops are complete, and we're going to get an interview here from our stage winner of stage one our and two. We're gonna have to make it quick though, because if we're going back green, don't want to have them. We'll make it quick here. Congratulations, Dave, on the stage two win. Uh, Thank you, guys. Just a quick word after pit stop two before we go back green. Looks like you had that good track position to stay out before, but now you're gonna have to come towards the back of the field, back up to the front. Can you do it? I hope so. We won't see. It's gonna be a tough part, right? It's the test. All right, well, good luck out there, and, and good luck for the rest of the race. Congratulations on stage one and two victories. Thank you all so much. Come back to the green. <laughs> that was that was fantastic, Tommy. Get ready to go back green. Todd <laughs> Wilson with control down, and away we go. Here in Atlanta, final stage underway. 
Oh, here we go. This is going to be the tell-all to how good that 88 car is. If you can make it back up towards the front, that'll be something to watch for the rest of this event. 110 laps here tonight. We're coming down to 50 to go in a couple laps time. 88 already looking to the inside of that double zero Ireland. Further on that, Menifee trying to get to the inside up ahead of them. Oh, that 21 of our full set of Randy Wah. No, Wah has some rear end damage on that Dodge Charger. Oh, contact! Will sit up into the wall, and there is Chin gets through it. Caution is out. Wow, I was really, really close for Chin. Quite the moment right there for all of those guys. Wrecking on the front straightaway, hard place to avoid everything, but luckily, most everybody did. A replay looks like Slingshot comes up. Ireland might come down a little bit. Contact between those two. They go for a little, uh, do a couple pirouettes down the front straightaway, but they keep it, those cars pretty clean. Gotta love that these cars have ride height so they don't dig the splitter in too. Yeah, otherwise we would be tearing up more front ends of race cars out here. Good to see uh, at least the, the uh, physics modeling of a valence out here as well. Uh, but especially that ride height. On board with the doubles, or the, not the the 88. Just watch him thread this needle. I might have made some contact with that 12. Nothing might too serious. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll get away with it okay out of this. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, a scary moment right there, uh, especially when you're trying to, you know you have a fast car and you're trying to make your way up through the field. You don't want an incident like that to just stunt the rest of your race. And you always worry about any damage on the front of the race car, motor damage, because that's just going to really kill you with your straightaway speed. Absolutely. Uh, you, and you can't really afford that uh, at a track like Atlanta, that's for sure. Oh, hey, special note about this 11 car, Todd Wilson. It's the M&M's, uh, thank... Oh, man, this is why we usually have our notes up, Tommy. Give me a second. I'll get you that special note in a second because I don't want to be incorrect. What you strive for when you talk to this. It's a th thank you hero number 11, Eminem's Toyota Todd Wilson has his sister's name on it. She's a nurse. Again, this is, this is kind of a paint scheme that was run last year by the 18 team coming out of the pandemic. To, um, to thank all of our frontline workers and heroes, and I want to make sure we gave you that special note about this 11 car here tonight. But thanks to all the doctors, nurses, EMT folks that don't get thanked enough for all their service for their communities throughout the last year. That was a cool deal at Dodge last year, showing up with uh, all the hero cars with uh, you know the taped over names and whatnot you saw like with, with kevin harvick's race winning car i was a quite the weekend to remember uh it was it was man that was something else i want to go back to that in terms of people missing nascar instead of constantly getting angry at nascar <laughs> how quickly things kind of uh turned around didn't they let me tell you, that sport came out of the pandemic better than when it went in, and now all of a sudden the fan opinion has turned back once again. Not surprised, but, you know, here we are. That's why you gotta go listen to the Fake Racers podcast this week, because we kind of talked about why that is and information that came out about next-gen testing. Thankful we're running Gen 6 here, if some of those reports are true about the next-gen car. Next gen mods coming, Tommy. I know you've probably seen some photos of it. Oh, I sure have, and I'm really excited for it, Joe. It looks great. And uh, well, we have a Pontiac out here on the field tonight that Slingshot's driving, and I can't wait to make a Pontiac on on that generic body, that the fourth generic body that that mod has. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and uh, man, I, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Day Dog 88 writing in. Somebody needs to make the 2020 reconfig. He might just do it himself. Going, Cohen Thanos up in this chat, and also Steve Rubino writing in. Howdy. 
Hello, Steve. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, Steve had a very rough night, Sunday night at Hobo. But we were racing on the dirt and do coin. Uh, early retiree from that race after a, a nasty hit. Glad to see him in chat. Glad to see he's doing okay. John Whitehill writes in fixing to make the generic 2002 Ford Taurus. Oh, man. That would look <laughs> so good. Wow. Sean, you give me some great uh, <laughs> mind thoughts here. What's Friend that? of the show. Friend of the show, Sean Whitehill. Friend of the Absolutely. show, everybody in chat. Steve and Billy Rose, who's the driver of the number six here. Yeah, I definitely get to see Steve in here after that nasty hit. <laughs> great to see. J Dog writes in about the dummy, dead dummy, deceased. Go well, listen to that podcast. We're going to talk about the, some of the confusion with that. It sounds like it was a, the sled test failed, so people, the dummy failed in the sled test, and blah, 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 blah. Like it didn't work, failed, but you know, words are hard for people, and we need to be more concise with our communication, and that's the biggest problem. But, you know, go listen to the Fake Racers podcast, because there's a better discussion than that. But I digress. We've seen a great race here tonight from Atlanta. Todd Wilson with control. Ryan Johnson, Randy Watt, Jeremy Menifee, Tyler Hunter. Your top five here for the restart. Coming at you, lap 64 of 110. We ready to do this, Tommy? I think we're ready. I know the pace car is because it's off and down pit road. Todd Wilson up front waiting for the green flag to fly and away it goes back to green here at Atlanta. One more retirement by the way from the Joe. Uh, that six car uh, of Billy WB has retired from this race. Ten remaining. Three top tens for everybody. Too bad there isn't a Golden Corral out car out here because the kids would eat fast, <laughs> eat free. Menifee to the inside of Wah for second or third. Boy, that's like a battle from the first laps of this race, Joe. Haven't seen it too much since then. Menifee gets that position. Of course, that 21. Definitely struggling with the effects of some rear end damage, too. And Johnson to the inside of Todd Wilson for the lead this time, going down as he turns one and two. Johnson's kind of been up towards the front for a, a lot, lot of this race here. Hasn't outright landed and pulled away, but now, now is an opportunity, although it looks like Todd's going to get the front position back. On to it. Menifee now looking for second. And look, Dave Chin making his way back up inside the top five. Yeah, he's following Tyler Hunter in the 70. Those two getting through our pole sitter. And now on their way up towards the front here. I'll tell you what, uh, Menifee in that three has been awfully quiet this race thus far, but he's showing his speed right now. Looks like Johnson's going to let him by for second place. Doesn't want to fight him right now for the position. Maybe that 59 trying to save those good years just a little bit. Uh, it's a smart strategy if we go green to the end because you heard it from your stage one and two winner, uh, Dave himself. Higher wear definitely big on this track. Speaking of Dave Chin right now, back in fifth. So he's found himself back into the top five after having to pit at the end of the stage and lose some track position. Of course, the trade-off there, winning this stage. So a, a sweep of the stages thus far, but he's got four more spots to go if he wants to get back up to the lead and sweep the whole race. Now, he did just run his fastest lap of the race so far, so that 88 obviously is running well now. Well, the first time he's been in the draft for a, a decent portion of the race. Not surprising to see that 88 Picking up some speed, but everybody's trying to chase this 11 to Todd Wilson at Toyota has been dominant so far this season. Wilson always a competitor for the win, always in contention for it. Can he do it tonight? It's looking good so far. He had a little bit of a challenge from Menifee, a little bit of a challenge from Johnson, but no one yet able to get in front of him. And Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, like we heard from Dave Chin earlier too, uh, the out front's the best place to be right now. He's, he's running well up there. Love the clean air on the nose. It gives you so much extra front end down force. Also keeps the right amount of side force on the left side of that race car. Got a battle back here for fifth. Wall to the inside of Chin. Side by side from one and two. Onto the back straightaway. Wall to the inside looking into three. 
I don't think that 21 has the same top end speed that it needs, but definitely that rear end damage, which we saw it as he's going to make the pass for the lead just to spite, or the pass for position just to spite me. That 21's probably coming to him a little bit more now as the run goes on, just because it was probably so, so loose early on with all that rear end damage. He's been on the back. Oh, 88 hard into the outside wall. Gonna get extra contact from the 12. Oh, no. And the sweep goes up in smoke. And he retires. Oh, no. no. Oh, man. And for Dave Chin, a great race so far. We talked about gambling in our first interview with him tonight after the first stage. Well, he bet on red and it came up black that mm. time. Hard, hard hit there for the 88. J.88. I've always wanted to try commentary on this kind of stuff. Anyway, to try it out. My recommendation, uh, and I've seen a lot of people do this in the past, and people still do do this all the time, is to have the AI do a race. You know, get a good 40 car field out there, or what have you, whatever, whatever size you want, uh, and record that and record yourself and watch it back. See how you do, where you can improve. And, uh, you know, there's no obligation or, or time you got to do it you just do it whenever you feel like it and have some fun with it i think that's probably the, the best way to start steve rabina writes and he hit his chin ave chin man oh man steve you can't do that to me i, I just spit all my water out <laughs> can't do that and that's why having live chat would be so dangerous during a Fox or an NBC broadcast. Oh, I can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve, I know. Like, we got gotcha. you. Being a little trickster, being a little comedian in chat, trying to take our jobs away from us. I see. I see how it is. Remember, folks, we'll be back with Hobo Racing uh, next Thursday and the following for modified racing at, Air at Airborne in Iowa. Like Ireland going to win the race off pit road. A little bit of contact maybe there between the 11 and the 3. Oh my god, Steve. Please stop. Ireland in the double zero out front and for the double zero uh, the first time we've seen him out front tonight it's kind of been hanging around quiet tonight um, but uh, a great pit stop there for him and he's up uh, leading the field for now been involved in a couple incidents though so you got to question the speed remaining in that car do you take two tires there well, let me see here. I know he took a left. So let me see if they're going around to take rights. I guess they would start there, wouldn't they? Yeah, just left side tires for that double zero. Huh. So, strategy there. Well, you know, you let jack up the left side, you can put a little more fuel in it, right? Yeah, you know, the, the, the balance of the race car changes a lot. If you change two tires, whether they be right or left. Uh, you know, and typically, uh, we've mentioned this before on broadcast, but your right sides and your right front especially are usually going to wear out more mm -hmm. um, than, than your left side tires, but then again, if you're going to change those, it's going to be a longer pit stop because you got to go all the way over on the other side and change them tires and come back. Left side tires really quick to change. That's why when I played NASCAR Center 2004 career mode and didn't know any better, I would always change left side tires just because it was a quicker pit stop, not knowing that changing the right tires would be more beneficial for my <laughs> lap times. You're always just trying to think one step ahead and then all of a sudden you realize you missed a step and then the whole bookshelf <laughs> falls apart. Ain't that the truth. We'll be going back green next time by... Like Ireland, he'll have the lead again on those two left side tires. Be interesting to see how that double zero hangs on. If he can continue to run with the big dogs, as it says on the side of that race car. Well, this will be a really big 
kind of experiment at least to see uh, what what this does. And we've ran quite a few laps here under green, and yeah, it's, you know, but but not too many to the point where I think these tires are, are gone on the right sides of, of Ireland's vehicle out there. Sport Fusion. He's also clutching it here, Joe. Now, similar to the other Atlanta races we've seen this week, uh, uh, a, a fuel run is about 30 laps. We have more than that left, and I don't think we're, we're in the point where we can make it after that round of pit stops either, so. Maybe just hoping for the best. Maybe just hoping for the best. Hey, you're going to need another pit stop. It's okay. Maybe you get a quick one here. You can keep the you can keep the track position. And we know track position is king here in Atlanta. It seems like the guy in the lead is able to kind of manipulate the air behind him, manipulate the way the guys get runs on him. You can do that. You can manipulate the race. You can control the race. You control your own destiny to try to make it a victory here tonight from Atlanta. Ireland with control here on the restart as we come down into the restart zone. Green car going to see the green flag. We're back underway here from Atlanta. Wilson with a oh, good run. He just yeah, went great, for it. Great restart for Wilson right there. And I mean, that's, I think, just your, your new tires versus the old ones right there. And, and two tires, especially up front. Ireland dropping back out immediately there. But Wilson having a little bit of a moment. Touching the apron a little bit. That's going to let that three-card Menifee sneak his inside. We saw Wilson do that earlier in the race. He made an adjustment. Now's not the time we're trying to make an adjustment, though, from what works. We know the bottom line is it's the prevailing line later on in the run. Menifee to the lead. He gets that one. Oh, he, he got that one there. We've seen Wilson be able to kind of control it once he's out front, but hasn't had this much of a challenge from anybody yet for the lead. Menifee looking to clear him out of two. He does. Big power move there from the three of Jeremy Menifee. Rode around to the back through stage one and two. Now into the lead here in the final stage. Working lap 77 of 110. Wilson way up high out of four. Got a little tight right there. Getting everything he can out of that car. Meanwhile, right behind him, Ireland's been able to stick with these guys despite being on just two tires. I'm back Ryan Johnson to the inside of Tyler Hunter. That's the battle for fourth. Hunter trying to hunt another... Podium finish here tonight. Going to maintain that fourth position. We'll see if that Valvoline Chevrolet can get around the bright green Ford Fusion. Up front, Wilson pulling away a little bit from Ireland. So that's going to allow these top two to kind of battle amongst themselves for now. But Wilson's got to find a way around Menifee. He's a little bit lower in the turns. That'll probably help him through there. And he's right on his back bumper down the back straight away. Hunter trying to get third behind them. Not able to get the inside of that double zero this time through three and four. Watch the battle for the lead as well. Like you said, Wilson didn't have enough of a run that time through three and four. Now we go back to the battle for third. There's battles all over the track, Tommy. There goes Hunter on the inside. He, he's trying to clear Ireland, and I think he will out of two this time. Ireland kind of washed out of the groove a little bit. Not optimal for speed, and Johnson's going to get around him as well. Move those two up to third and fourth. Back to the battle for the lead. Wilson all over the back bumper of Menifee for the top spot. Still not able to get a good enough run to get to the inside down through the tri or through the quad oval. He's just got to really maximize his exit out of turn two. And that'll give him a shot to look to the inside of Menifee going into three. But will Menifee kind of shade down to the bottom of the racetrack a little bit and try to block? We'll see. Time's kind of winding down here. We've got 30 laps left this lap. It's, it's getting down to it. You know, we're not we're not quite done yet, and I don't think these guys are saving any fuel to try and stretch it those extra five laps they would need to. So so we're out here racing hard. Is there a difference between blocking and shading? Yeah, I, I, absolutely, yeah. Because here's, here's in my head what my, my definition for it is. Blocking is definitely the reactionary hard jerking move to, to cut somebody off. Shading is a little bit of a slower kind of thing. You're just creeping down the racetrack to take away the bottom line from the driver behind you. It's like the, the square and the rectangle thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Shading isn't blocking, but blocking is shading. Does that make any sense? Uh, not I don't really. know, if it, I don't know if it works. So maybe it is. I, I, either way, here comes Todd's chance. 
Shading is like a legal form in the in the driver code of conduct for blocking, right? IndyCar yeah. race control doesn't penalize drivers for shading during the Indianapolis 500, but they do penalize them for blocking. It's about that. The big distinction, of course, is the reactionary portion, like you said. Shading, hey, if you want to go run the bottom, go run the bottom. If you want a low line, by all means. But, uh, you know, when you block, you're definitely it. And when you block too, right, Tommy, you're, you're, you set yourself up for probably causing or being involved even worse in an incident. I'll tell you what, um, fun story about blocking real quick here as, as the battle for the lead is kind of over. Now we're fighting for second with uh, Menifee and Hunter here. Uh, my first win in karting, I was doing a tremendous amount of blocking. I'm not pointing any fingers, but everybody in the paddock knew that the, the guy I was fighting for the win well, these are supposed to be sealed engines. Let's just say his was resealed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so all that power I was having to kind of fend off, and luckily I was able to do it. Hard to block when you don't have any mirrors. You have to do a lot of the, the auditory kind of feeling if you're going to do that in karting. And, and regardless, I, I won, so it's okay. But, oh, man, blocking is something. Let me tell you. Blocking has an art to it. To be a good, to be a good blocker doesn't necessarily mean... Uh... You're making you're, you're making dumb dumb moves. Yeah, well, you don't want to wreck yourself. You know, <laughs> you're trying to keep the position. Yeah, you know, not right. wreck yourself out of it. Some drivers don't uh, don't understand that there's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave. If you're, if you're at least gonna wreck yourself, you, you gotta at least take the person out with you. Otherwise, it was all for naught. <laughs> <laughs> if someone's gonna throw a dumb block, you better make sure if you're gonna run them over, though, you you, you don't involve yourself. Yeah, well, and we've seen we've seen what happens when when you accidentally do. Uh, it becomes a, I mean, it, it follows you. <laughs> it follows you. Speaking of following up here, Todd Wilson up front. Slingshot coming off the pit road. Yeah, he, he's he's in the lead. Everyone's following him right now. Menifee's trying to hang with it. Really close moment with slingshot and Hunter right there in three. We've kind of, uh, we've splintered the field. Yeah, that top four is, is pretty much on an island of their own within a second. Um, but, but even between, I mean, going back to Ryan Johnson there in fourth is, is a little bit of a gap. So really things are, are more with your top three, Tyler Hunter in third in the 70. Uh, of course, the three for Dale, that's Menifee, and of course our leader, Todd Wilson up front. Yeah, I was blocking Steve, if you can imagine. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> when you're trying to win your first race, you'll do, you'll do just about anything. Hey, those trophies, they, they, they're, they're mighty shiny. Oh, yeah. You still have the trophy? Some of them aren't, though. Some of them aren't. I've got a trophy from uh, Nakos. Mm. Uh, last year, actually. Did it you win a, the shrimp? A, yeah, yeah what the it shrimp was? trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, they don't make trophies like that anymore. I got a, another trophy from my SCCA of Racing Ventures thus far. In the Miata? Well. Yes. Uh, it's a cool clock, barometer, and uh, thermometer uh, deal. It looks like the gauge cluster on a car. Wow. Really cool. It's got a nice little plaque on it that says Sonoma Raceway, uh, June, whatever, whenever that was. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Tom, that's why Tommy, anytime he's in the booth, folks, that he just brings some legitimacy to the broadcast. Professional. Just, okay, just a little bit. Semi-professional and professional yeah. sim racer, but semi-professional real race car driver. Hey, Joe, I don't mean to step on your parade. You're not, you don't have a broadcast on Friday, do you? Not this Friday. Well, guess what, folks at home? Uh, look out for the PAX Almost Pro event on iRacing. The boy is going to be in a Formula V event for a total cash purse of $5,000 being handed out to 18 drivers. Wow. I'm one of them. Maybe. We'll see. I mean, 30 qualified, and there's the qualifying races and 
top 18 make it in. So I mean, I, I should, but you never know. But uh, yeah, man, it's pretty exciting. You know, you know, make sure you shout out all your friends here at JTN if you get an interview. If, if I get an interview, you better believe I will. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday, this Friday. Be there, be square. PAX almost pro Irish scene event. Make sure to post you a link. That's why you got to follow us on Twitter. We'll get you that, that out to you. Absolutely. Tyler Hunter's been all over the back bumper of Jeremy Menifee here for the last couple of laps. Trying to find his way around the three. I'm thinking everyone knows they, they're going to have to pit again, right? Um, everybody's got to pit again. Are you, are you setting yourself up for that pit stop, or are you just trying to get as far forward as you can? Yeah, and you know, the way this race is developing, I would consider short pitting. If you know you have to pit, we're coming up uh, 15 laps to go this time. I mean, that's if you pit now, and we do have one on pit road, it's the 98 Joe, I think that's the optimal strategy because you're getting fresher tires on there sooner. Even if you run this thing till the, the tank is dry, you've still got a couple laps to make up. I, I, and at that point, I, I don't know. I think those guys that put on the fresh ones are going to have blown by you when you come out. So I think that might be just the move. Yeah, but his four tires really going to be worth it? Like, say these guys, what I see them doing is they're going to run it out. That way there's less laps left. You also, you don't have to worry. If a caution comes out, right, you, you don't want to be the guy caught with your pants down if a caution comes out. Yeah, you definitely don't, and that's a risk you take. Believe me, I just lost a race like that on Sunday after leading like 90% of the race, but um, that's neither here nor there. If I was in the pit box though in this one, I, I don't really see a yellow likely to happen. I'm coming in and I'm taking two tires, I think, right now. That's my bold claim. That 98 car has retired from the event though, oh. so... Looks like that is not a strategy call. I think the three cars come to pit lane this time. We'll see. Looks like he set himself up for it. Yep. Slowing down. Here he comes. We'll see if he takes four or he listened to me and he's taking two. We'll find out. We got down to pit speed. We go back to our leader, Todd Wilson, though, in the 11. But man, if he does on pit lane. Hey, look, there's Mike Joy, Daryl Waltrip, and Larry Mack. Look at those guys. Uh, I noticed them on the spectator cam earlier. I thought that was kind of fun. They're not calling the race. We are. <laughs> or is that you, me, and Bristol? Bristol's the bald one, I think. Yeah, I do think so. <laughs> J-Dog, you can't tell me you haven't heard that phrase before. You can't tell me. No, that's a classic. Everybody knows that one. Four tires in the three cars. Jeremy Menifee on Pit Road, Joe. I don't know if that's going to be enough because I think these other guys they're going to take too. I really we'll do. We'll see what they. We'll, we'll definitely see what they do. And hey, ten laps to go in this thing right now as Todd Wilson crosses this line. Oh wait, wait, Tommy. That means it's your favorite time of the night. Oh, well, it sure is, Joe. It is the TWB 10 to go. On behalf of TWB, I'd like to bring you GardenLightsDirect.com. From porches to patios and more for all of your outdoor lighting needs, visit GardenLightsDirect.com. Okay, go check out the website there. That's your TWB 10 to go. Todd Wilson staying out so far here. Looks like the 59 of Johnson has come down to pit road. Tyler Hunter closing the gap on that 11. Johnson already off of pit road. Gonna go back and see what they did. If they took two, if they took four, it was, I believe, just a two tire stop for Johnson. That's a big move. Can it be a race winning move though? Well, he's got himself about half a straightaway length ahead of Menifee. So so he's he's got a little bit of an advantage there. I don't know if there's enough time for Menifee to catch him in that situation. Meanwhile, Hunter and Wilson staying out thus far. Uh, coming down to it, let's see what they do. No sign of them pitting yet. Here Hunter. comes Wilson, or here comes Hunter, excuse me. If he's going to come to pit road first. Wait, does he just, maybe just do a splash and go? We'll see, looks like, looks like Wilson's finally going to pit this time, calling out on the radio. 
So we're all going to see how this strategy plays out here. Green flag pit stops for the first time tonight, and Joe, this is going to decide the race. Let's watch the 70 stop. Take right sides. No way he takes four. I don't think so. He can't at this point. He doesn't. Hey, here's Wilson down onto pit road now. What does Wilson do? He was awfully close with Hunter on the racetrack. And that one lap sooner that Hunter pit, maybe that's enough to get the advantage. I would assume Todd's going to be taken two here. Well, let's find out. Down into the box. Nope. Flash and go. None. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. See if we can't find Hunter. Hunter, he's still coming off a of turn four just now. Boy, a huge advantage for Wilson. That might have been the move. Are oh, the tires going to hang on? He's struggling on the apron, though, Joe. Yeah, but if Hunter only has two tires, I don't think that's enough. If it was four tires and that was the gap. Hunter's just ent exited turn number two. Meanwhile, Wilson's already in three and four. I think that's that might be enough of a gap. With just five laps to go, it looks like that might be the case. He's just got to hang on to that M&M's Toyota Camry. Menifee has gotten back by Ryan Johnson for third. But right now, it's the Todd Wilson show in that 11 M&M's Toyota Camry. This time at the line, he'll see four laps to go. Well, he's led a lot, and I'll tell you what, that pit strategy right there, doing something a little bit different. Waiting might have actually helped. Maybe he knew what other guys did, and the, the pit crew was able to communicate to him, hey, we can get away with just a splash with as late as he pit, and certainly right now, that helped out a lot. It would take it would take a caution at this point for this thing to go any other way. I think I think Todd Wilson's got this in the bag. And a caution would end the race. So as long as the eleven wasn't the caution, it'd be a, a okay, you know. Absolutely, three to go this time. The gap back to Hunter about five seconds, maybe four and a half down to four. So it's it, it closed about half a second per lap so far since they've exited pit road. With three laps to go, the math, Joe, it's not going to be enough. And I take a big mistake from the 11 for that 70 of Hunter to close that gap and even get, get, you know, a shot at it. Words are hard. Two to go. Wah coming off a of pit road. This is where, you know... Lesser commentators would just be filling the air with random nonsense. We here at JTM love to let the cars breathe. Love to let the pictures do the talking. Coming off of turn number four, Todd Wilson's going to see the white flag one final time here from Atlanta. The gap right now, 2.7 seconds back to Hunter in second. It closed dramatically over the last couple laps, Joe, with those two fresher tires compared to the no new tires for Todd Wilson, but it looks like this one's all said and done for. Wilson just has to take it through three and four, keep it steady. He does drifts out to that outside wall, gonna have to get off the gas a little bit, but coming to the line, Todd Wilson wins it in Atlanta. Tyler Hunter across the line in second. How about Jeremy Menifee in third for the three car? Yellow flag being waved to single, signal the end of this one for the drivers. We had overtimes possible. Todd a Wilson. Classic Atlanta strategy race at the end there. I've, I've been in quite a few of those. Ultimately, it was the splash and go strategy for Todd Wilson that won him this race, but. Oh, well, what really won him the race was his great speed all night long, being in that position to make that move. Burn it down, Todd Wills. I think it goes like the Candyman can. Thank you, Steve. I, like that. Steve, I appreciate that as always. 
Steve also said a good thing about the JTN merch. It's super soft. It fits really good. Go check it out. JTN merch store linked in the description below. Thank you. Thank you, me, but not the boys. These folks here at All Star, they put on another spectacular show. Can't thank all the admins, especially Postal. ASR Postal, he does a great job running these races. I think you'll hear just as much from the drivers when we get a chance to talk with them after this one. But Wilson burning it down for all the fans here in Atlanta. Mars going to victory lane once again. Drivers notify that they're going to be called up to the booth for an interview. Let's see if we can get them. Pick a number one through three, Joe. Five. All right, we're going to start with third place, Jeremy Menifee in that case. He's the closest to three that there was, or to five there was. Let's bring him on in. Jerry Menifee, driver of the number three. It's the JTN booth. You got a copy? Simple. Well, hey, welcome to the booth. Uh, a nice third place run for you tonight there. Taking four tires in that last pit stop. Uh, explain the strategy call at the end there. I figured they'd stop for at least two, so I'm never thinking uh, maybe with a few more laps, I'd have caught back up to them or been ahead. Just need a little bit more time there at the end. Uh, you, you did manage to get around Ryan Johnson for that third place and and seal uh, that third position in the three car tonight. You led some laps, um, but did you have anything for Todd Wilson up front tonight? Nope, that was all I had. I had a little bit of damage from earlier. As Joe gets our results uh, up on the screen here. Jeremy, uh, a good run tonight. Uh, indeed, congratulations on the third place while you've got you here up in the booth. Anyone you want to thank tonight? Uh, ASR putting on the race. You guys for hosting it. Thank you very much, Jeremy, and congratulations on your third. A good run tonight. Start of second, finish third. That's the three car of Jeremy Menifee. We have our second place driver here as well, the 70 of Tyler Hunter. Tyler, welcome to the booth. Let's see if we can get the headset on here at some point. <laughs> hey, sorry guys. Hey, there, there he is, is, Tyler Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, no worries. Bristol's just making sure he's got all the wires hooked up. Probably had one a little loose for you. But Tyler, a fantastic run for you in the 70 car. You, you know, you you lined up eighth on the grid, finished second. Two-tire call there at the end. Did you think that 11 car was going to go with none? Did you think you had a chance? Because it looked like you were really closing that gap late in the run before the pit stop. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what he was going to do there. Sometimes... Uh, I always think opposite of what he's going to do. Sometimes, you know, if I would have taken no tires, then he would have taken two tires and, you know, he might've caught me or something. So, uh, he's always good on those last clutch pit stops. So, um, I just figured I'd go with two tires and, you know, at least have some new rubber on me and try to make a run at them. But, uh, yeah, I was closing it on. I need a few more laps. <laughs> hey, that's uh, It's always a good thing though, to be made, be faster than the other guys because it knows you, you then you know you have a good piece it gives you that extra confidence give those boys back at the shop some extra <laughs> confidence in the cars they're building um talk about though you, you rebounded you had the speeding penalty there at the end of i believe it was the, the caution at the end of stage two talk about rebounding from that uh yeah luckily the, there weren't too many uh cars you know left in the race there was a bunch of wrecks early uh so it didn't really hurt me too much i think i only lost maybe like three or four spots right there but um yeah just like work just try to work my way up through i, I needed a long run because my car was a long run car i i was getting killed on restarts so i was uh glad to see that last run go about 35 to 40 laps there Always good to see the long green flag runs. Tyler, a fantastic night for you and the 70 Valvoline team. Congratulations once again on the second place finish. And again, a big thank you to you for bringing us out to these races as always. Before we let you go, I know you got sponsors, family, folks to thank. Floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks to you guys. Um, 
thanks to all the guys here at ASR, all the admins do an awesome job. Todd Wilson and Billy um, with the finances for, for tonight to put this one on here. So it's uh, it's good to have that. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to have you guys back here for the playoffs. Excited to see what happens in the playoffs. Tyler, I know you got a lot of good momentum building throughout here in the summer, got the win at Pocono a few weeks ago, as well as our all being our all-star winner. Congratulations once again on another strong run. Good luck as the rest of this summer run heats up to the playoffs and can't wait to see what you and the 70 team do in the fall. Thanks, guys. Tyler Hunter, driver of the number 70, Valvoline Chevy Camaro. We now bring in our race winner, driver of the number 11, M&M's Toyota Camry, Mr. Todd Wilson. Todd, you got a copy? Yes, sir. All right, I just drug you in. I, I said, you know what, folks? He's in victory lane, but you know, we take precedent this time. I, I don't think I, I feel like the folks at Mars, they got plenty of pictures of you in victory lane this year. Is, that's correct, right? Well, we have done well with our uh, Mars candy schemes. That's for sure. <laughs> Talk about tonight, though. We saw you were up front at the end of stage one, had the late contact on that last lap in the stage, sent you into the wall. You lost all your track position. Talk about what goes through your mind when that happens, how you set your goals for the rest of the race. What what kind of how does that set the the course for the rest of the race for you behind the wheel? Yeah, that was definitely an unexpected uh, break for us. And at that moment, you just have to remain calm and try to assess the situation and know that, you know, you've got a pit crew on pit road that can that can fix the car to the best of their ability. And all is not lost. All hope is not lost. And that's what I did. Um, I don't think Dave, you know, I had I had pulled out kind of late there to try and make a run on him on the top there towards the end of the stage. And I just um, I think Dave just misjudged just slightly. And uh, anyway, we just made a little bit of contact. But, uh, you know, we were we were able to come on pit road, get the, the damage, uh, you know, fixed and, uh, you know, restart in the back of the pack and work our way up through there. And we just took it one spot at a time. and. You know, fortunately, we were, I think we were up to P2 at the end of, towards the end of stage two, and I pitted there uh, at the end and gave up some stage points uh, for the track position at the end of the race. And that clean air, you know, you just can't beat that clean air, right? So, uh, and that really propelled us there at the end and, and set us up for the for the end of the race. Hey, clean air is always king. Having a good wrap, though, on the car always makes that win extra sweet. Tell us about the significance of your car here tonight. Yes. So uh, thank you uh, for bringing that up. Actually, uh, there was a uh, special pressure uh, put on me by my sister tonight. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she watches our broadcasts and uh, she's a, a big supporter, uh, a big fan, probably my biggest fan. Um, and so I told her that I would uh, run this scheme. I was going to have to paint it. Um, to give me some time to paint it. And I would run this for her uh, because, you know, we really uh, don't thank our frontline workers enough for what they do. Um, you know, she's uh, she's a very good nurse and uh, I really am proud of uh, of all that she has accomplished and uh, and you know, and all the nurses uh, and all the other frontline workers. And uh, but, you know, this scheme was significant last year when NASCAR uh, did the the Real Heroes Project. And they put tape over the driver signatures above the door uh, and, and put a nurse's name there. And so I felt you know, very honored and privileged to put my sister's name uh, across my name tonight and, and recognize her with this scheme. Uh, and I am so thankful that she was able to watch uh, you know, us pull into victory lane with this scheme. And uh, so that was, uh, this was probably one of the most special races I have, I have ran in a long, long time. So, um, yeah, so shout out to her and, uh, and to all the frontline workers, you know, that are, that are watching tonight. We, we really appreciate all that they do. Hey, it sounds like you have to have that name on the door uh, more and more often because it, it leads to victory lane, I guess. But no, nothing new for you and the 11 team. Todd, congratulations once again on another victory here. I know that's a lot of positive momentum going into the playoffs in the fall. Before we let you go, you know the drill. I think you were, you were our first winners in our all-star racing. The floor is yours. I know you got more sponsors and folks to thank. And again, a thank you to helping uh, bring us out here tonight. 
Hey, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and yeah, you know, my sister Wendy, I, I have to, I have to give her a shout out uh, you know, again. You know, she, she told me, she said, "You better not lose tonight's race." <laughs> 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 so with that kind of pressure, I was like, I was on point on game. Um, you know, I was, co- I was concentrating a little more, uh, with each, with each corner. So, uh, but yeah, no, uh, you know, have to thank, uh, uh, Nelson, uh, you know, the admin here on Wednesday nights for all that he does and, and, and putting this on, you know, I thought we had a, a great run there at the end. It, you know, we got that green flag pit stop in and I knew it was going to come down to strategy. And, uh, you know, when Tyler pitted him uh, ahead of me, I didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't know if he was going to take two tires, four tires, you know, a splash. Uh, so I contemplated and I, I took the, the gamble and just took uh, a half a can of fuel so as to have enough fuel um, for the end of the race. And um, I was really hoping that we would not have a caution there at the end because <laughs> I would have been a sitting duck. Uh, but fortunately, we didn't, and it finished under green. And I think Tyler had taken two tires is what he told me there at the end. So uh, we were able to be out front just enough. He was catching us about half a second a lap, maybe a little bit more. And uh, But we were able to you know stay out front. And, and what about this Atlanta track configuration? Isn't it awesome? <laughs> And I'm so glad that we got to race uh, this configuration one last time tonight and, and put on a good show. It, it had multiple grooves going on. My car was a little bit loose at the start of the race, and I found a lot of uh, speed up at the top uh, and until the car got more stable because uh, I had just started it off so loose uh, to try and be around at the end of the run. So, but yeah, I mean, just it was a great night, a uh, great race. And a great run to Tyler and to uh, to Jeremy, and uh, got to thank you guys at at JTN uh, for you know all that you do, um, and you know covering us and you know so many other uh, fantastic leagues across the NR2003 community. Cannot wait for you guys to cover the playoffs. Uh, it's going to be just so much fun, and uh, so yeah, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All the emotions of the victory there, Todd. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us after this one. Now, uh, go celebrate the win. No, you got a lot of folks to go celebrate with. Congratulations once again on the victory here. Yep. Thank you, guys. Great job. Uh, thank you. Todd Wilson, driver the number 11. M&M's, Toyota Camry. Tommy, that concludes our coverage here from Atlanta. Another fantastic race on this old racetrack, huh? Oh, sure was. I love the finish of this thing, man. Uh, it was kind of a slow burn towards the end there, just waiting to see kind of what guys were going to do with strategy. Ultimately, the best strategy was to come in and take no tires, just a splash of gas at the end. You wouldn't think with a, with a track that is so, you know, tire hungry uh, that that would be the winning strategy. But it was just barely by two seconds, man. What a great finish. Congratulations to Todd Wilson, Tyler Hunter, and Jerry Menefee for their podium finishes tonight. Another fantastic race here at All-Star Racing. And, folks, if you want to join, make sure you check out All-Star Racing on the web. We have their link to their website in the description below. So you can find out how to register, how to join the folks here at All-Star. We do that for all our leagues, too, of course. So if you see another league that maybe you're interested in, too, hey, you know, never hurts to send out a bunch of applications. Can't thank you folks enough for all you do for us here on JTM. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the like button on the video and subscribe ever so close to 650 subscribers. Can't thank you folks enough for all that you do for us. Also, check out the JTN merch store if you want to go that extra mile to help support us here on JTN. We appreciate that ever so much. Tomorrow, we're going to be going to another one of Tommy's favorite tracks, the New Hampshire Motor Speedway with our folks, fine folks at Bomb Squad Racing. You're not going to want to miss out on that one, folks. I'll... Ricky and I will be on the call for that one because Ricky's got a little hometown interest in that New Hampshire Motor Speedway. But with all that being said, folks, thank you so much for tuning in here tonight on JTN. For Bristol, our producer, for Tommy Bordeaux, I've been Joe Twansky. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. We'll see you guys tomorrow right here live on JTN. So long for now, folks. Yeah, and they're going to be three wide coming to the checkered. Never mind, they're going to be... T- oh, oh, it's Africa! It's <laughs> Who that? A turn four into the trioval. White Hill is through the grass. It's going to be Noah Joyce winning his first career race in the Red Bull Cup Series. All right, and they're wrecking behind him. We got cars flying everywhere. Cars upside down, but it doesn't matter. Noah Joyce has done it. He's won at Daytona in the three car. Busa. Busa's gonna oh, he's going to use that apron. apron. He's going to use the apron. They're going to be side by side. Coming off he the corner! Boy, 
back to the inside. It's going to be a dragway race to the line. So Musa gets it. 